The coaching carousel has spun through Starkville. It uh, stopped and picked up Dan Bowen and took him off to Gainesville, where we wish him well. Yes, maybe some um, aggravation about how quickly it happened in the aftermath of the season ending so quickly, but at the same time, it has left Mississippi State in a great position. Unlike most coaches, Steve, who leave a program, he has left the program off much better than he found it. He left a program that's winning and a program that whoever takes the job is ready to win more and maybe bigger. That's true, David. This is not a rebuild project at Mississippi State, an eight consecutive bowl streak, uh, thanks to Dan Mullen and his staff, and many of which will move on and not coach the bowl game. But you're right, David. A lot of these jobs that are available now, including the University of Florida and the University of Tennessee, these are real build, rebuild jobs. They won four games this year. Bulldogs had an opportunity to win ten this year, and quite frankly, probably should. So whoever comes in is going to have a ready-made team with a, a lot of seniors back next year, uh, juniors that, of course, are rising to be seniors. So you've got an opportunity to win right away, which will curry a lot of favor with a fan base that's gotten accustomed to winning. We'll talk in a moment about how the coaching service is quickly. We're going to uh, talk about the bowl situation. Mississippi State will sign, find out on Sunday evening its bowl assignment. I checked four different sites this morning, and they each have bowl. It was going to four different bowls, including still the Citrus, quite possibly the Outback, the Gator, I'm sorry, Tax Slayer, and the Music City. So certainly we, you wouldn't expect anything less than Nashville at this point, which Bulldog fans would find very convenient being a Friday afternoon bowl. But the fact that the Outback is still in play in analysts' minds says something about A, the chaos now in the SEC with so many eight-win teams out there, but B, even with a coaching change, even with an injured starting quarterback, the Bulldogs are seen as a hot commodity. And David, that's a big testament to this program. And this is where the fans have to really step up. The marketability of Mississippi State without their head coach, without their leader Nick Fitzgerald, is going to be questioned. So what has to happen is Bulldog fans, this could be a shining moment in Maroon history. Step up, buy tickets, and these players, and we've seen many coming in and out of here today, uh, these guys need your support. So if you're on the fence about going to the bowl game, no matter where it is, we're going to encourage you to get off the fence, get a ticket, get a cowbell, and come out here and cheer for these players that have given you so many great memories over the last couple of years, whether it be Nashville, Tampa, Memphis, Birmingham, Pascagoula, wherever. You need to be there with cowbell in hand and supporting your team. Pascagoula has a bowl game? Well, not, not yet. Okay. Well, we can eat a half shell put down there anyway. Oh, now. Who will coach the Bulldogs in the bowl game? Now, we have an idea, Steve, of what the staff we put together. This is assuming that the new coach would not be in it, but that's not settled either. A contingency plan has been put in place for who will run the Bulldogs, certainly during bowl camp. Well, the new head coach will supervise everything. Now, of course, Greg Knox is the interim head coach. We understand he will join Coach Dan Mullen right. in Gainesville uh, once his tenure as interim head coach is done, whether that be this week or the bowl game or whatever. Uh, Greg Knox, not expected to be back in Starwell after a nine-year run. Coach Knox did a great job while he was here. On offense, we do expect D.J. Looney to coach through the bowl game. Uh, we expect Brett Elliott to coach the bowl game, and hopefully Greg Knox. And then that will leave, uh, you know, some questions. You know, and the, the quality control guys that have worked alongside Billy Gonzalez and John Havasey, who have already departed from Gainesville, I understand they took their belongings today, uh, will have an opportunity to coach. And uh, in many ways, too, it's almost one of those things will be a little bit looser. On the defensive side of the football, Brian Baker is expected to coach the ball game, as is Terrell Buckley. Uh, Ron English right now in line to probably call the defense. Mm -hmm. Should he not take a defensive coordinator job somewhere else before the bowl game gets here? That'll all be negotiated. Now it's about finding a linebacker coach. and There's some talented GAs. You know, Christian Russell's a guy that's been here. Uh, so there will be some guys that the players are familiar with. I know many of our fans are worried that, all of the coaches have left. That's not the case. Not all the coaches are going to be on the staff at Florida. That doesn't guarantee they're going to be on the staff at Mississippi State either, but they will be here through bowl camp and through bowl practice and do their best to help get a victory for Mississippi State. We will find out more this week and when the coaching hire is made about what bowl plans are. And keep in mind, when Mississippi State hired Dan Mullen in 2008, he was allowed to keep coaching with the Gators in a national championship game, and that seems to have worked out pretty well. All right, Steve. The candidates. We, we believe there were some interviews on Sunday night, whether in person or by phone. We know there's been one interview this Monday already, and that right now seems to be the name of most interest. And that's Jeremy Pruitt from the University of Alabama's defensive coordinator. He's a guy that has kind of pursued the job. Uh, we've been hearing about him for a couple of weeks now and kind of some back-channel conversations with some peers uh, around the league that, that he was very interested in this job. 
he would be a good fit for a lot of reasons. Number one, he is a great recruiter, and I'm told that he will bring in recruiters, and he will bring in guys that are familiar with the territory, familiar with the state, familiar with the southeast, and be able to hold this class together because he's recruited a lot of his players, but also he's recruited a lot of the players on the roster, which I think is big. There's some other names out there. You know, we mentioned uh, you know, David did perhaps some interviews yesterday. Interesting to know, John Cohen not here yesterday during men's basketball in his customary seats. Did see Bo Hemphill later, and then uh, you know, Bo would fall into ear as usual. And then now we understand that uh, Bo is no longer on campus as well. So some decisions are being made. Some interviews are taking place. We're hearing, though, David, that there could be an announcement as early as Thursday, so we, which would mean some interviews perhaps today and tomorrow, and then perhaps an offer, and then finalizing the contract. But the Bulldogs want to move quickly to get into ball prep, uh, to get in the road, because it's contact period right now. Your coaches are on the road right now, but they're kind of in limbo, not really knowing what to say other than just hanging here until we make a hire. So the timing of this hire is very important, but I know that John Cohen has already got a running start into this, so it won't be a rushed hire. It will be a quick hire. And we'll come back and talk once the hire is made, how it impacts on recruiting, especially in light of the December 20th early signing period. I know there's been one decommit this morning, but you expect that. If that's all you've had so far, you're probably doing pretty well holding. And guys are going to wait and see. We know that. And we'll talk more about that later. What are some other names that you believe have come up? I know I've heard Deal Brown, current head coach at Troy, who has an SEC scalp on his wall and a great offensive background. We've heard some speculation possibly about Barry Odom, who, while he's a Missouri alumnus, does not get the support there he probably warrants. And he's a defensive-minded guy, but he has a great young offensive coordinator, and Josh Heifel is his quarterback coach, and our good old friend Rick Haley's on that staff mm -hmm. as well. But there are some other names in play, like a Steve Campbell even. Yeah, it's true. And I don't know ultimately if Coach Campbell even gets an interview, but he is a name of interest that some people have brought up. He's done a great job there at Central Arkansas, had a great career at Mississippi uh, Gulf Coast, had coached at Delta State, even coached here at Mississippi State for a while. So he's a name that has some, some currency with some people within the fan base. Uh, you know, Mike Leach has been one that people have mentioned. I don't know oh, how. Oh, the press conference. Oh, it'd be, be fabulous. It'd be absolutely Marketing fabulous. Marketing gold. Uh, but that said, there's a lot of times there are people that will mention coaches' names because they're ready to make a move. Not necessarily they're interested in this job, but they're interested in another job. Uh, just to kind of get out there. Now, that may be the, the situation with Coach Leach. We, uh, you know, we'll see how that all kind of plays out. But uh, I, I know Matt Wyatt's a big Bill Clark. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and as of this morning, I was told yesterday and again this morning, Bill Clark so far has not been contacted by Mississippi State. And that, that is a bit surprising to me, to be quite honest with you, because the job that Bill Clark has done at UAB is just tremendous. Basically bringing them back from the death penalty and they're 8-4 and, and possibly could have been 9-3, and three, even 10-2 and two with, a, with a couple of good halves there. So he is a name a lot of our fans are familiar with. Mike Norvell is a guy of Memphis. We don't expect him to be a candidate. A lot of people have, have mentioned him because of his success, but uh, we don't anticipate him being a candidate. I know that he has some ties to Arkansas, and we'll see how that works. But it's one of those things, too, David, with so many options now, the Bulldogs have to be expedient in their actions and be sure to move because if you make the wrong decision here, it could have long-lasting effects. And, of course, we've heard the fact that Tennessee is now possibly making a play for Coach Pruitt as True. well. So you're in a, comp a real competition, but Mississippi State can compete with these programs. The pay they were willing to raise Dan Mullen to, that's not saying they'll give him the same contract the new guy coming in, but he knows the starting point. He also knows who's anyone with any SEC experience for the last recent years has seen the expansion of facilities, the investment in staff, and, frankly, what you fans have done as well in making this program ever more competitive but the main thing being, whoever walks in inherits a darn good football team. It's true, David. And it's a fan base that is ready to win, that is used to winning. And also, a, a football team, a roster right now, there's a little bit of bitterness that's to be expected. These guys are pretty anxious about a, uh, an SEC East opponent coming to Starkville next year. September 29th. Dan Mullen returns. Save, save the date, and if you can, get every ticket you can get your hands on for that game because I doubt there'll be any sidewalk sales for that one there. But anyway, we'll set that aside there. A lot's going to be happening, obviously, in coming days. Uh, Mississippi State you could make a hire as early as Wednesday, we're told. It looks like more possibly Thursday. But again, this will move, as Steve said, quickly without being rushed. So we're going to count on Coach John Cohen and University President Dr. Mark Keenum to make the best situation because if there are two people who want to win more, then our AD and our president, I don't know them yet. They, may, they would have to be playing the game themselves to want to win more these administrators do. So there are guys who are doing what is best for Mississippi State. They have a big picture view of college athletics, the SEC, the whole national picture. So you put their trust in them 
And again, somebody's going to see this and think, I'm going to have a healthy Nick Fitzgerald the next fall. I've got an offensive line that returns almost intact. Great running backs. A defense with a lot of guys. A defensive line, a bunch of monsters there. Some young linebackers. Yeah, the secondary has to be shaken to shape. you still got to get one or two extra receivers and replace a punter. But most of the pieces are in place for Mississippi State in 2018 to have the year that Dan Mullen built them up for. And that's the point. This will not be a rebuild. This will be a build on for the next coach at Mississippi State. We'll be updating as we get further information during the week. And of course, we'll be talking later on with basketball underway as well. So for our staff at Gene Space 24-7, this is Steve Robertson and David Murray.